Close your eyes. Try to be sensitive to the breath coming in, the breath going out. Notice where you feel it. And by breath here we mean not so much the air coming in and out through the nose, but the movement of energy in the body as you breathe in, as you breathe out. Where do you feel that? Focus your attention there. And try to make that part of the body feel open and relaxed. But not so relaxed that your attention wanders away. You've got to keep your attention right here. Because when you're with the breath, you're in the present moment. Because there's no future breath you can watch, there's no past breath you can watch. And you want to be in the present moment because this is where the mind moves. This is where it makes its decisions. And all too often its decisions are pretty random. And we hardly know why we're doing them. Like you're sitting here with the breath and a few minutes later you find yourself someplace else. You have no idea where you were in the meantime. Here it is your own mind that you're not alert to. You have to be up to speed with what's going on in your mind, because otherwise greed, aversion, and delusion can come in and take over. And by the time you realize it, they're really strong. And when they're strong, they're hard to counteract. You want to catch them while they're weak. So bring your alertness up to speed. We stay in the present moment not to listen to the birds in the present moment. We're here to watch what we're doing in the present moment. So we can catch ourselves. Sometimes the mind lies to itself. It makes up its mind it's going to go someplace else, and then it pretends it didn't do that. And then when your mindfulness lapses, when your alertness lapses, then it goes. So you've got to be really sensitive inside. So you can be up to speed. In the meantime, you try to develop good qualities in the mind, like mindfulness, alertness, discernment. Discernment means seeing what's worth doing, what's not worth doing. Which activities, when you do them, lead to a short-term happiness, which ones lead to a long-term happiness. Because we all want happiness. Everything we do, consciously at least, is for the sake of happiness, for the sake of well-being, however we conceive it. And the problem is there are lots of different ideas in your mind about what would constitute happiness. And sometimes some pretty strange ideas come and take over. So again, you have to be up to speed. So you can catch these things. The mind is like a huge committee with lots of different opinions inside. And sometimes a small faction will take over. The faction that wants something quick, something fast, something right now. Can't wait for long-term happiness. But as the Buddha said, discernment lies in seeing. But when you do it, it will lead to long-term welfare and happiness. And then being able to act on that realization. Because that's the other part of discernment, is noticing when your mind doesn't feel inclined to stay with what's skillful. You can, know, you can talk it into staying with what's skillful. But the things that it likes to do that cause suffering, you can talk yourself out of that. But the things that it doesn't like to do that will lead to long-term happiness, you can talk yourself into wanting to do that. That's a sign of genuine wisdom, genuine discernment. And it starts by being up to speed with what's actually going on in the mind. So you can catch the tricks of the mind. We try to be up to date with the world outside, but that, that doesn't really matter. What you really have to be up, up on is up to speed with your own defiance. Because the world outside, we know what it's like. It has its ups and its downs. And it's really unreliable. The problem is, if your own mind is unreliable, then you're in really bad shape, because your mind is what shapes your actions, and your actions are going to shape your life. So be up to speed inside here. And that way you've got the important part of life covered. <laughs>